Welcome to the Art of Conscious Living TV. I'm very pleased today to have as my guest Ed Stretcher. He is a distant remote he spiritual healer and I have my own testimonial of my healing with him that I'm, I'm going to share with you later. Uh, it, we're going to be talking about angels, demons, and sorcery and spirit and the physical world and what all this means and it's going to be a whole new way of looking at the world so please embrace yourself and stay open with an open heart and open mind to explore the possibilities of how we have viewed the world up until this point in time because we're going to turn all of that around into new thoughts and new ideas of new found reality. So on that note, please take a moment and let's look at this video clip. I felt this amazing energy just come from the top of the cosmos down through my head and just cascade throughout my body. And I felt good healing energy, positive energy flowing from my head to my toes. I felt my body stretching and relaxing. I felt a certain twitching of the knee as it relaxed, the tension subsided my neck also. I just felt slowly better. So it's been exactly one month since I've had my session with Ed, um, which by the way has, uh, I've never met him in person. It's only taken place through Facebook chat and an occasional phone call, which about 15 minutes. So I've never met him. Um, anyway, the end result is that all those physical symptoms are gone. Um, I can still feel the warmth and tingling in my hands and feet. It continues to this day, and as I think about it now, I, it's happening. And I got hit by a car about eight or nine years ago, and that threw everything out of whack. And in the last eight or nine years, I've had a couple surgeries on my arms, a um, bunch of injections, I was on drugs for a couple of years. Uh, it was just a roller coaster straight down. I was scheduled for. A thyroid operation because the doctor found out that I, my thyroid has to be removed within three months. Meet Ed Stracher. A former electronics engineer and inventor turns a successful author and trainer who fell into a deep slump going through some intensely difficult times, arising afterwards with some fascinating revelations and abilities. And he energized the water and as I was drinking the water it felt like it was glowing was happening from the inside of me and I started feeling a light vibration throughout my entire body. It was just a real beautiful energy. When I came out of it I felt very relaxed and um, actually almost a bit giggly. One of our little girl, Jenny, she could not sleep. She was always uh, crying in the night so many times. Uh, she had, according to Ed, uh, evil demon spirit and he removed. So with all the girls in, in the orphanage and somehow the home became much more happy. The children are more healthy. And since the healing sessions with Ed, um, the changes are, are well, for namely, my pinched nerve is no longer bothering me. I could walk and, and move. But the physical pains are gone is one thing. The, the emotional clarity and the, 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 the level-headedness and, and at ease that was introduced was something that may not have even been there before I got hit by the car. I had two or three times private section with Ed and I, I, I completely healed. I, I regained my strength. 
I've had two other experiences of healing with Ed in a group situation. And at first I thought, oh, group situation, I'm not gonna get my piece of the healing or it's gonna be dissipated, I'm gonna get less. But actually in a group, the healing is totally magnified, especially at the end when you get to do a virtual prayer chain where you reach out. Ed, I'm so very pleased to have you on this show, The Art of Conscious Living, and welcome. How are you Thank today? You. I'm doing great. Nice, uh, nice of you to have me here. Thank you. Well, Ed, let's start from the very beginning of when you were a young boy and mm -hmm. you were in the East Coast in New York and growing up and you were from Italian background. So tell me about what that was like, of, of your religious beliefs, your social beliefs, and what was going on with you. Well, I was born into a Catholic family, and I, born into, I came out of a broken home, but the reality was, you know, we were told to go to church, we were told that we had to go to confession. We would tell the priest our sins in that little phone booth in the church. Uh, Mom wanted me to be an altar boy because she'd be so proud of me, you know, running around with the candles uh, on the pulpit there. And, but something inside me just told me there was something missing there. And I became an atheist. Became an atheist till I was about 26 years old. And I did my first meditation with a, a great master teacher uh, who's now passed on named Alexander Everett. And in that meditation, uh, this man with a beard, long white cloak, radiating incredible love came to me right in front of my face. And I knew instantly it was Jesus. He didn't say anything, but just he had a tear coming from his eye and the incredible love that I felt was profound. And this was a time when I was an electronics engineer already graduating from college. And I was working uh, to design chips for weapon systems, nuclear missiles, satellites, all the big bad weapons in the Reagan Gorbachev era. And this teacher, Alexander, said, we're gonna go to Russia and see what this is all about. And we did. And I went to Russia, I spent three weeks there and it was a profound three weeks because up until then, I thought the communists were these big bad people. Well, I learned that the Russians were really nice people and that there was something wrong with the information we were being given. Uh, I couldn't find one Russian that hated an American. Uh, and yet on my side of the fence in the weapons industry, boy, we wanted to blow them to smithereens. I mean, that was a whole attitude. And then, you know, I worked with the Air Force. I, Subsequently taught at the U.S. Air Force Academy, West Point, U.S. Naval Postgraduate School in Monterey. And so I was used to this mentality of the big bad Russians were going to come to get us. But I knew at a deeper level it simply wasn't true. So I couldn't stay in that industry. So that was my own evolution. I went back to Russia. I studied chess under the Grand Masters with the former, in the former Soviet Union now. And I learned some mental training and brain power methods, which I then applied to reading and created something called Reading Genius, which I taught around the world and became quite prosperous. At one point, everything stopped. I had mirrors breaking. I had everything going wrong. I couldn't sleep. I started having very bad dreams. And all my deals and, and things started breaking down, and I couldn't understand why. When I was developing Reading Genius and became really proficient at it, realizing that I'd reached the frontier of mental capacity. I was teaching people read 50 and 100 pages a minute and more with full comprehension. And there was something beyond that. And what was beyond that was a spirit. And so I went to Asia to study this spiritual realm. And I had no idea what I was going to encounter. Kind of like the naturist who loves nature and they don't realize that there are snakes, wolves, and bears in that forest too. And so I got attacked, psychically attacked, evil attacked. And uh, I went from being extremely prosperous around a millionaire status to now being a negative millionaire, living in my dad's basement and everything was going wrong. So I either had to figure out how to break through or take my own life. It was really that simple and it was coming right down to that point. So I figured how to, I figured out how to break through and I had the help of some great masters here on earth as well as angelic realms. And what I realized as I was studying to try to break through and figure this out is understanding real truth. The angels only come to you when you start understanding the truth. If you still believe in Santa Claus, they will not come to you. 
because you don't understand enough. And you go through lifetime after lifetime after lifetime until you come to uh, truth revelations. And truth is a field. Knowledge is a field. You can access it. You don't need to get it from books. When you get it from books, you get it third hand through someone else's interpretation. So real truth is aligning your heart and mind and soul with a high enough vibration that you can access it. Once you access it, then you can connect to the angels and the angels connect to you. And when we talk about angels, there are levels of angels. There are lower dark angels and there are higher angels of love, life, and light. And for me, I align with only angels of love, life, and light aligned in the order of Melchizedek, which means Jesus Christ, Babaji Krishna, Lao Tzu, certainly Mother Mary, Kuan Yim, and all these saints are all in the order of Melchizedek. And this is the highest level of love, life, and light in the universe. So Ed, how long did it take you to start to feel that you had some type of mastery with, uh, from the Orient of being exposed to this, that you could tap into these angels and connect with your heart and be able to do the healings that you do today? At what point did you be able to know that you can actually do this and own it? And what was it well, like to do that, actually, and know that you could do it, that? It was profound. You know, I had one brilliant, I had two brilliant teachers. Uh, Raymond Grace was one of them. And he showed me how to connect to what he calls spirit guides. I call them angels. We'll call them anything you want, really, but we both understand what that is. And I'll never forget, he taught me how to energize water. And I had an assistant in Asia, I'm in America at this time, and her grandmother was uh, basically in a coma and had liver disease of some kind. I energized the water in her body, I restored the life force or the spirit of her liver into her liver, and without any medication she got up and, and awoke and walked out of the hospital where they were expecting her to, to die and give her her last rites. Now that occurred over a couple days, but the reality was once the water in our body is energized, once the spirits are restored, everything becomes possible. So, it, you know, it took 10 years of hardship and Raymond taught me and I kind of figured out what he was teaching me. It took me a few months to do that. But uh, the answer to your question is probably 10 years and a few months. But uh, once you realize the truth, he taught me to connect to several angels. Then from that, I learned to connect many more. Then I kept reading and studying and understanding this concept of DNA. DNA is the big secret. We have dumbed down DNA. We can enhance our DNA. And you don't need to go to a, a certified board at the hospital to do it. In fact, they will prevent you from knowing this. This is the exact hidden knowledge they don't want you to know. You can expand your DNA. You can reprogram your DNA, and there's really a battle now going on at the higher forces because the dark forces are trying to dumb down your DNA, change it with GMOs, change it with HDTVs and other technologies that are trying to dumb down our DNA and change us, basically enslave mankind. Then there are the higher angels that are sending higher vibrations and higher wisdom through these vibrations. So if you're in tune enough, you can tune into that. You can raise your DNA, and by raising your DNA, you can raise uh, the powers of love, life, and light, to raise your levels of consciousness. So this is a battle that's going on in Earth, and those who are awake understand this and can tune in, and those who are asleep, their DNA gets changed. So it would be fair to say that we are a body of energy, and energy can be changed and transmuted. And being that you're an electrical engineer, you're seeing everything in energy and in, in, in low wattage or high wattage or frequency. Correct. Well, everything so, is energy. Yes. Raymond taught me everything is energy and all energy can be transformed. There is no exception to that. The caveat is you need power, right? You can transform ice to steam. You need some power. You can transform uh, solid rock to steam. You need a lot more power. Vol volcanoes do that, right? Well, if you tap into the universe, the universe is infinite power, right? You ground it with Mother Earth, you have cosmic male or masculine energy, divine feminine, earthly energy. You connect that. Now you have uh, a, a grand power scheme that you can connect to. And when it comes to evil, quote unquote, sorcery you mentioned and so forth, I couldn't understand why when I had all my problems, I went to all the great pastors, because I was born again Christian for almost 20 years, to all the great pastors that I knew who did their uh, damnedest to, to help me and pray on the Bible and pray to God and so forth, nothing worked. I went to great healers. 
they couldn't do it. And so I started understanding this concept of power when it comes to healing, healing power, right? When you have energy, the amount of energy is called power. Well, why did some healers have much more power than others? That's what I sought to understand and how to raise my level of healing power. So once I figured out how to do that, then I realized that remotely, not only my assistant's grandmother, but various people around the world, I could heal and remove the blockages, restore the life force, raise the energy in their body all remotely, just with a soul to soul connection, which could be on chat and it certainly could be on the, on the phone or the internet. Well, henceforth, that's how you do it remotely, the healings. Correct. Right. Well, when, when we work remotely, like for example, when you and I worked, when we worked on your knee, higher dimensions, all right? Your knee has a spirit. We raise you to higher dimensions. So what that means is you take an ice cube, a ice cube is pretty solid, but if you raise it, raise the vibration of that ice cube, it becomes like steam, okay? And steam you can mold and shape very easily. So if we raise the vibration of your knee, okay, we can then transform the pain. Pain is an energy, Right. all right? Torn ligaments are an energy. An unhealthy knee is an energy that can be transformed to love, health, and strength. And we did that with you. Do that with many people. Well, that would be a good moment to segue into that so our listeners know exactly what we're speaking about here. So let's take a moment for me to set that up. Uh, back last year in October, uh, I went to the uh, orthopedic surgeon and I asked him, what is wrong with my knee? It's just, uh, out of nowhere, it just started to inflame the size of a grapefruit, and it was throbbing, and, it was, and I was in tremendous, tremendous pain, seven days a week, 24 hours a day. So I wasn't doing any of my typical walking or exercising. I was basically laying on the couch with my leg raised up with ice on it. And he said to me, uh, he took the MRI and the x-rays, and he took uh, 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 both knees, and he said, here, this is your normal right knee. Look at the cartilage, it's all normal, but look at your cartilage on your left knee. It's completely dissipated, gone, uh, through the years of wear and tear. So you have lost 80% of it. So you're basically bone on bone now, and that's why you're getting all this inflammation. So mm -hmm. during our, and oh, so the final thing he said to me, I said, well, can we do, uh, cadaver cartilage where we can put a cadaver cartridge in there or can we do stem cell to grow my uh, cartridge and he says no we're not advanced there the best we can do for you Victoria is that uh, when you finally can't you can walk a little bit but you're gonna have to do pain medication constantly but he says the best we can do with you for you come back in the future and we'll do a whole knee replacement I says wow Okay, that's, I mean, just because of some spongy tissue cartridge, you have to, <laughs> and the rest of my knee is perfect, so you have to destroy the whole knee and replace it. And he says, well, that's where we're at with medical. So then I met you shortly mm -hmm. uh, thereafter of going through this for about three months of excruciating pain. And within 20 minutes of this uh, visualization and this healing that you did, uh, at the end of it, you asked me to get up and ask me what I felt. Well, what I did not feel was that constant, constant pain that was there and, my, and, the, and the size of the uh, uh, knee in the back and, and below it that was blown up, inflamed, the size of a grapefruit, as I mentioned, it was gone. It was, it, my knee felt strong and normal and I start walking around and then you asked me to give gratitude of that, for, of, of, of that the knee had gone yes. through that and and so let's let's use that so people are listening to yes. that are going to say as their mouths are dropping open now and they're saying what is she talking well, about sure so and, let's, and i've done this a dozen times right so let's uh, break that down what you are actually yeah. doing there here's the concept here's the difference between me and that doctor that doctor's working in lower three dimensions physical uh, physical uh, analysis of the knee mm -hmm. i'm not a doctor never was never have have been I'm not even a medical or, or certified health expert of any kind. What I know is the knee has a spirit, and the spirit of your knee has the ability to repair your knee. And in your case, the spirit of the knee had left for whatever reason. The spirit of the knee had left. I had a 22-year-old football player from the University of Florida, same thing, impact, boom, spirit of his knee had left. He had four knee operations, he was going for a fifth, same thing. We restored the spirit of your knee, sent it love, right, higher dimensional love, while your mind and body are in a still higher dimensional 
higher vibrational state. And what that means is we just get very peaceful. You call it visualization. I, I would not use that word, but th that could be partially correct. But the reality is we raise the vibration, we restore the spirit of the knee, we created a hologram of the perfect knee. And I said to you, see and feel your knee already healed. And in your heart, thank the universe for healing it, right? Because you create the hologram, and then with the gratitude of thanking the universe, it draws the energy right into that hologram, just like batter into a, a cupcake mold, right? So then you get cupcakes, right? So you create the mold, the vision, the feeling, the hologram. And we all are holograms, we know that, right? You create this hologram of completely healed me and you thank the universe for healing it in a high vibrational state, that's the key. Cannot do that at 3D, cannot do that while eating chips and watching TV, but in a high vibrational state, that can be done. Now, what we also did is remove the blocking factors. We removed any evil there, we removed any negative emotions any sadness, any trapped emotions that you may have had in your knee, and um, remove those blockages, restore the spirit, energize the spirit with love, infinite love from the higher dimensions of the universe, and the spirit of the knee then can repair the knee. So, so the spirit of your knee really repaired your knee, and we enabled that. So the question that begs to be answered and asked is, uh, the cartridge, is it still 80% gone and why is the pain not there and the cartridge is is the cartridge going to repair itself or is the cartridge still deficient like it I, was I can't you know you're asking me three-dimensional medical questions and I'm not a medical doctor okay. I certainly don't have x-ray machines and the reality is I'm not sure I really care to because you know when your knee feels well okay spirit of your knee has the ability to repair your knee I understand your mind wants to know those answers, but you know the reality is when you were five years old and you fell off your bicycle and you scraped your knee or you hurt, you repaired right away. Your spirits are alive and intact. And at some point, they go, okay, if they go for whatever reason. Usually it's trauma or impact, but it could be an evil attack. I had an evil attack and my knee blew up, okay? And it was literally a psychic attack from higher dimensions. So. Anything is possible. So I can't answer those three-dimensional medical questions for you. I'm not a medical doctor, but I don't need to be to heal your knee, and your knee healed. So you send love to your knee. Your knee reports to the spirit of your body, which sometimes we call our soul. You're fine. You know that. And it, it, this happened, what, two, three weeks ago, right? So your knee has been fine for two or three weeks. So it's not, you know, just an overnight sensation that goes away. Well, it's been a month and a half now since we did A month and day. a half. A month and a half. Right, okay. Uh, but if I went and had an x-ray and we still seen the cartridge is still 80% gone, then that doesn't matter that it just, it's healed. Or perhaps it is, it's healing on its own over a period of time. E either way, you know, I, I can't comment. I would love to know that since I work at a distance with all my clients. I don't have a physical therapy salon with x-ray machines and so forth. But, I, you know, I, I'm trying to think 12 out of 13 knee cases we've healed. Uh, some took a couple sessions, in, you know, as opposed to yours, which was 20 minutes. But because you're fairly uh, awake in consciousness and you understand the healing process, you were a relatively easy subject, okay. right? So you healed right away. You believed, you knew, you wanted, you had desire, right? If someone goes in like this, well, half my job is to get them to, you know, open up and receive because it's their knee, it's their soul, it's their mind, body, and spirit that they have to connect to the universe. I simply guide that connection, but I don't create it. All right, well, Ed, I'm being mindful of our time, and I know that we're going to do a healing, and for those who are viewing, uh, they're gonna be able to receive this healing, and also, uh, it, this is not a live program, so when they play mm -hmm. back this uh, video, uh, and or they see it on the website or they play it back in YouTube or Vimeo or wherever, mm -hmm. they will still have that impression of that hologram of that healing. Explain how that works before we do actually do the healing for the audience. Sure. Okay. Uh, yes, uh, it, radio shows that I've been on two years ago, I, I we did a healing. The healing energy you can still feel from that radio show. You'll be able to feel this from the podcast. This works at higher dimensions. Do not expect your three-dimensional PhD in physics to understand this or explain it. 
I can turn off that healing, I can turn it on. If I develop some skills later on, I can come back and re-energize the healing that was done on this TV, and it will have elevated power and dimension. So uh, sometimes it's easy to just flick the light switch rather than try to figure out all about how electricity works. Uh, what we're gonna do here is, uh, in a moment, and I'll be turning off the cams while I do this just because I get very still, and it's beneficial not to have people watch me, but just to get very still in tune with their own soul so that they benefit from the healing. Just like before when I said the pancake uh, or the um, cupcakes uh, example, I can send the energy, right? If I'm the baker, I can pour the batter, but you have to create the mold. And that mold is a hologram, the vision and feeling of you being completely healed. That's what makes this work. So. Uh, when I count to five, we're all going to take a deep breath in, and you just get very silent. Silence is the key, mental silence, because healing comes through love, and love comes through the heart. If your mind is busy, it will block the heart. So I'm going to turn off my cam. If now is the right time, yes? Yes, yeah, so for the technical crew, he's going to turn off his camera and allow the screen to be black at that time, and we're going to go into silence. So just stay with us. Okay, so when I count to five, we're going to take a deep breath in. I want you to feel your heartbeat. The reason you feel your heartbeat is because your mind has to be quiet to sense it. Don't feel it like this, but without your hands. Your mind can only sense your heart. You can only sense your heartbeat if your mind is quiet. And so simple breath and a heartbeat we use to quiet the mind. I'll go silent here for a few minutes, I'll black off my cam, and you just receive. And the way you receive is you simply see and feel yourself already healed. And if you have a bad knee, for example, you see and feel your bad knee already healed. As well, vibrationally, with your heart, when I say vibrational, I mean with intent, through your heart, as opposed to words, you thank the universe for healing you. That draws in the energy to fill your hologram. And for those who do not know how to connect to their heart or would, or are curious about connecting to their heart, when we say that, give an example of what that really is, opposed to the mind. Well, it, yeah, sure, good, good question. If you're going to send love to a baby through a glass window or a porpoise or an animal, a horse in a field, you wouldn't scream, I love you. You'd send that love through your heart, right? You know, right? And so you just, you know, the, the, the illuminate that person or animal with love. That's it. Simple. Yeah. So you illuminate and you send gratitude to the universe as you see and feel yourself completely healed. So That's it's all. A, it's a feeling of, of, the, of warmth and of, of good wishes that well up in, within you. That's your heart center. You yeah. Know? Look, if somebody just helped you out of a ditch, if you just had a, an accident of some kind and someone reached out their hand, you would be very grateful. Yes. I'm saying be that grateful now before. Perfect, perfect example. Thank you. Follow. Okay. Have that gratitude before and see and feel yourself already healed. Okay. This is the key. All right. So I'll turn off my camera and begin to count. One, two, three, four, and five. Breathe in. Allow yourself to quiet and sense your heartbeat.
okay. Relax. If you have some water near you, have a glass of water. If not, that's okay. Just allow everything to settle. Things are perhaps moving. Things are perhaps uh, shifting. And allow that to happen and just stay focused on your love. Feel your heart. Feel your love. Don't get caught in the inspection trap of using your mind to inspect because that can undo or block. Feel your love. See and feel yourself already healed. And thank the universe vibrationally from your heart for healing you. Okay, so Victoria, I always love to get feedback to make sure what I do is working because you're in San Francisco and I'm in Asia at this time. What did you feel? Well, I think uh, a picture is worth a thousand words and I think as the camera is on me now, I have more light in my eyes. We can see that for itself where before, and I can't stop smiling right now. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Well, before I, I was feeling more into the interview mode and more Q&A, and I'm there as an interviewer, yes, but I'm much, much more grounded. I'm much more connected to you and to everything. You're everything, connected everything, to everything. Everything around me. You're connected to everything. Where before I was fully. trying to kind of thinking I was, but uh, I am 100% now connected and grounded. Yes. That's the key word. Grounded. Cosmic male, divine feminine, earthly energy coming through you, connect you to everything, and that has the incredible power to heal and do quote unquote miracles. Power is not coming from me, I'm directing it. Yes, I feel right. I feel one with my breath now. Where before my breath was racing, and now as I'm breathing in and breathing out, I'm I'm I feel very connected to that breath, and I feel very alive right now, and um, I'm feeling very taller and more. Yeah. In the Latin language, the word breath and the word spirit are the same word. Right? So your spirit's connected, the breath moves out. It, understand this. We have this concept called the divine frequency. And think of a rose. If the rose has got a blanket over it, it's out of the sun, it starts wilting, it gets disease, gets insects, and eventually it dies. All right? It's off its frequency. Put that rose back in the sunlight, give it the water it needs, and the rose comes back and is healthy. So what I just did there, amongst many other things, is put us back on our divine frequency. Get in line with your divine frequency and the body starts coming back to perfect health. Perfect health is a natural state. It is not an artificial state. It is not an exception. It is a natural state. Now, there are a lot of forces that try to get you off that natural state. Some try to profit off it, right? Some thrive off the misery and so on. But the reality is perfect health is a natural state. So when you get back on your divine frequency, you can restore and realign to perfect health. And let's talk about that, of where how mm -hmm. people can get off of their own innate, natural, uh, divine state. And from what I'm knowing and from previous conversations, is this correct? That through operations, anesthesia, through alcoholism, uh, through blackouts, and through major depression, that's when the holograms are imprinted from different spirits, and they can be negative onto our soul at that time. Well, uh, <clears throat> so look, look at it this way. Let's talk about how to connect. We have in the center of our head a pineal gland, mm -hmm. okay? This pineal gland is a doorway to higher dimensions. It is a doorway to spirituality. The front door is the third eye, the back door is right behind the head, okay? This is why, when this is energized, you can connect to higher dimensions, all right? This is why the prophets all had halos. Their pineal gland was energized. The biggest statue in the Vatican is that of a pine cone, symbolizing the pineal gland, because it's in the shape of a pine cone. 
So the reality is we connect to these higher dimensions through this. The Bible says, when thine eye is single, thy whole body shall be full of light. So you just experience that, okay? Fluoride blocks the pineal gland. This is why they put it in the water and the toothpaste, not to enhance your teeth. That's the cover story, okay? So there are these dark forces that don't want you to wake up. Uh, you know, when I learned this, right, it's 10 minutes of knowledge. I said, I went to church for 20 years. I was a born-again Christian. Why didn't anyone ever teach me this? Well, okay, bigger question for another time, but the reality is they don't. You can learn this in minutes. And when you do, then you raise your vibrations, you raise your immunity to dark forces and dark attacks. You raise and can tune into the field of knowledge, the field of truth. You can raise your vibration, you can raise your spiritual power, right? This is all possible, but none of the religions or the books really teach you this much. Okay, little, little pockets, but they, they try to, to block those pockets as much as they can. So, so are, the reality is, hmm. yeah, go ahead. Are diseases happening on a physical level or are they happening on the, in a spirit level, your soul level first? Well, first or of all, simultaneously. Physical, is, physical is a bit of a delusion. We call it physical because it, it is at the lower yes. vibrational state where it feels solid to us, but we know that everything is energy and energy has characteristics of vibration, frequency, and magnetic polarity. Okay, so literally in that healing, I realigned your vibration, your frequency, and your magnetic polarity. All right, so uh, <clears throat> disease, everything happens at the spiritual level and emanates down to the physical level, like water. It always comes down to the lowest level. So, you know, in your case with the knee, you had um, the spirit of your need left. We removed any blocking factors, which could be evil, could be dark forces of any kind, and certainly could be trapped emotions and, and things from your own lifetime, right? Could be things from past lifetime, literally, karmically, all right? I removed all that. Then we restored the spirit of Uni, energized it, Uni came back, okay? Right now in this little process we did here, uh, removed any dark blockages around you, any negative energies, restored you to your natural frequency, vibration, and magnetic polarity and all of a sudden you feel connected again. And this for, can happen like this. And for the viewers who were listening and going through the healing, if they followed mm -hmm. along with you at that time and relaxed into their heart, they were receiving the same benefits too. Absolutely, absolutely. And, and it's up to them to receive, right? And, you know, I've done this many, many times, hundreds of people sometimes listening. Everyone receives something different. Mm -hmm. because we're all a unique set of energy, we're all a unique set of karma, experiences, uh, mindset, and so forth. So it's all, it's unique to everybody, and the biggest mistake anybody could make is say, well, I didn't feel the same thing she felt, I felt something different. Well, that's, you're your own unique package. And to a large extent, we create our own uh, experience. Are you able to share what you are actually doing when you are doing this distant remote healing? On yeah, a sure, spiritual sure, level. Sure. So when you turn off the camera, uh, are you? Uh, you're not using any apparatuses. You're, no, you're, no, no, no. You're magic connecting trick, to nothing. these. Uh, the reason I turn off the camera, I'll tell you a quick story. I had a neighbor once, and she needed healing, and she sat on the bed while I, I just went into my centered state. But she kept watching me, and the healing didn't have much of an effect because she's watching what I'm doing. She's expecting hocus pocus and a rabbit out of a hat, right? No, it's nothing. She was getting distracted. I told, Distracted well, yeah, brain. exactly. Right. She's watching me rather than tuning into her own soul and seeing and right. feeling herself healed, right? So, so I said, go in the other room. She was a neighbor. Uh -huh. And we're in an apartment complex, all right? I said, go in your apartment next door. Literally, we did it all over the phone, and she healed. So what are you, <laughs> so, actually, what are you actually doing, though? Okay, first off, I give gratitude to my angels. Uh, Lord Jesus Christ, Babaji Krishna, Grand Master Melchizedek, okay? I thank the archangels for protection. Archangel Raphael to the east, Archangel Gabriel to the south, Michael to the west, Uriel to the north. So I set up this, and by connecting with them, I'm connecting to higher dimensional energy fields, higher vibrations. I then get in tune and I ask permission to your higher self to help you. Because if you're higher self, your own spirits and guardian angels do not allow me access, I cannot access. So I have to ask, and this is part of your own willingness. Right? Are you willing to receive this and are they willing to let me in? So I have to do it with the highest intent and they can see my intent. So if I have intent to hurt you, they will block it. I have to ask their permission all in line with the love, life and light of Jesus Christ and the order of Melchizedek. So once I get their permission, then I remove any dark energies, any blockages, 
any negative programs. And that's removing the blockages. Then I restore the spirit of love, the spirit of healing, the spirit of vitality. Restore the spirits to your limbs and energize those. Are you seeing Follow. are you seeing this in your mind's eye? No, it's all done it's all done in the heart. It's all done so you're in tune with are the you, universe. Are you and in feeling the heart. my uh, soul, my spirit, to, to know what energies are around me? Or is it? A, a, well, a, they say the word when, like empathy. You feel things from other people. Is that when the way you and I worked one on one? I did that. In, in now in a group setting, I do it generally for the audience. And really, whether it's one, a hundred, or a million people, I can heal a million people at one time. There's it's, it's the same process. Now, a million people have to be following me all in sync. Right, but at the same time, when I do it for a group, I don't tune into one individual. I see the whole group as one representative individual, and then I work with that, and the group has the same effect. Mm. So, are you a uh, how do I say that? Like a, a semiconductor, a conductor is coming through you. You're 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 attracting energy, and it's coming through your your spear, your energy, your spirit through well, you. It's, I, I would like to say no, I'm connecting you to the universe and I'm directing this energy through you. Um, so, oh, so you're like uh, a conductor. I'm not channeling like spirits, a... I'm not channeling angels, you no, hear no. you talk yeah. a lot about that. I'm not doing any of that. I am with my higher dimensional access and my enhanced DNA, I have access to higher vibrations that I can then remove, just no different than a car wash with high speed jets, right? They can move caked on mud that you can't do with your own garden hose, right? So they have higher power. So I can do that, I can, I can remove that. I can remove the sorcery, the curses, the witchcraft, and things like that, which uh, generally uh, can really cause a lot of havoc and very few healers uh, have the power to do that. Uh, so I had to do that to, in order to save my own life, right? Because I had a lot of that directed on right. Well, in all due respect to you, I'm sure no other interviewers have asked such questions, but I like to go underneath it all. And yeah, sure. in saying that, I'd like uh -huh. to know what it is like. I mean, I can't even imagine how beautiful it would be to, ha to be doing what you're doing and helping so many other people on this planet uh, as you've helped me. So what is it like as an ordinary man being doing extraordinary things that you're doing? Being that you, you were a mathematician, you were an engineer, you've elevated your DNA at the highest level and frequency, and you continue to do so. But what is it like to be this mere uh, human mortal that you are, as uh, like mm -hmm. all of us, to be able sure. to do this? I can, only, well, I can only imagine in my mind if I could do such things as you could do. I don't know. I mean, one way I would be with great joy and it would feel like great service, but another way it would be, I don't know, I'm grasping for the words here. I, I can't really even imagine what it would be like. So, well, you know, I often felt that way with rock stars. And then when you hear the rock stars interviews where the girls tear their hair out in crowds and photographers are constantly bombarding them, you know, they give yeah. you the other side of that story because all we see is them on stage being rock stars, right? So, look, there is tremendous gratitude. I, I feel incredibly honored, especially when I help, and my big charity is Third World Orphans. When I can clear an orphanage, the orphanage director says all the children are crying, they're up at night, they're getting bad dreams, and they're fighting with each other and getting very nasty. I know there are demons and dark spirits in that orphanage, right? I work with the director while all the kids are sleeping. We clear that. He says they woke up happy the next day. That gives me so much satisfaction. I have another case where uh, a client, Tom, in Northern California, had a daughter that was artistic. And we cleared that she was artistic because he vaccinated her a lot when she was young, through good intent, but through uh, the uh, dark side of the medical industry. Well, we started clearing that. And all of a sudden, she's communicating with him on a higher level. There's love there between them again. And that is just tremendous growth and satisfaction. And on the other side, you know, I get people bombarding me with letters and requests for free service, and I'm not a free service, uh, nor can I afford to be. And But, you, you know, that's the bombarding me and then bashing me when I don't give them free service. And they expect me to be like a church, and I'm not a church. Right. So that's the, that's the, 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 the good and the bad of it. And, and the, the, one of the biggest satisfaction, last night I was working with a lady from Brazil. She was 68 years old and really on her last days, could feel it. 
her soul was drained. She had about 30% of her soul left. Okay, I can restore the other 70%. Her soul has the ability to repair her body. She had tremendous witchcraft. She had a massive curse on her. Remove the curse. Remove the dark energy field, which is what a curse is. Remove those blockages, connected her to heaven and earth, got her to still her mind, and all of a sudden the life force from divine cosmic male and divine feminine earthly female came back and started rejuvenating her body. And within two sessions, she's alive and well again. You know? So, are, so you, are, that, you, are you glimpsing at her spirit and her soul? I mean, how, and the Aztec records, or how are you seeing that? No. <laughs> no. Well, I'm communicating with her directly, and I can hear it in her voice how weak she is. Uh, I can sense when her mind goes astray, when she starts thinking, right. and I have to get her to tune her heart and pineal gland, her mind, heart, mind, and feelings, emotions connected to heaven and earth. So uh, in, in healing since second, fourth, and sixth chakras, right, aligned to heaven and earth, when they align, magic can happen that's the energy channel that's like just like when you're vacuuming the floor if the plug comes out you have no power well if you disconnect from heaven and earth you have no power when you reconnect to heaven and earth through mind body and spirit all of a sudden you can awaken you can energize and uh you can heal well for all the hundreds of questions that i have of what you are doing i do know one thing there's yeah. terms that there's the airy fairy or the the woo woo <laughs> or the new yes. agey or the or the uh, occult or the uh, religious fanatics or oh well, this you are not you are none of that you are you are logical and pragmatic and and completely sane and completely uh, uh, in a realms of re very realist of reality. And, and you bring in, uh, you're always talking about energy, and it's all done through a way of, 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 of pragmaticness. It's not, it's not anything of, 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 um, of, um, of uh, how would I say it, uh, uh, organized, organized. Yes. Uh, uh, no, uh, not, you know, Einstein said it best when he said, if you cannot explain it simply, don't understand it well enough. Yes. Okay. So to understand something well, you have to explain it simply. In the spiritual world, there are no absolutes. Everything is metaphorical. That's what we don't understand. So scientists on the physical dimension, they want to know and measure, you know, weight and speed and velocity. Well, you can measure those things. Those are right. physical characteristics. But when it comes to the ethereal realms, all of a sudden, that those terms of measurement and that level of thinking doesn't work. And it's all metaphorical, but yet power and ability has something to do with it. You can feel that. So, you know, when I get into these debates, I, I just like you, I said, well, feel it. Right. Feel so, because your body won't lie. So, uh, this would you, be akin to Nikola Tesla, who understood well, about free energy and energy, and none absolutely. of none of the, what he was doing. I mean, he developed the ACDC, and mm -hmm. and Edison got the the uh, accolades for that. But it was really Nikola Tesla behind all of that. But then, right. anyway, so his, those who know about Nikola Tesla know what we're talking about. But those who don't know, they should Google Nikola Tesla. But I see him right. as being very practical, very pragmatic, and working with energy. Yeah, and he got things to work. And, and Tesla tuned into the field of truth. Yes. This is where he got his knowledge. Because there's no one there to teach him this. So he connected to this realm of free energy. And realize this, connecting to this realm of free energy, this is precisely what threatens the powers that be. Because if you connect to free energy, well, you don't need their oil, you don't need their, their medicines, you don't need their addictive drugs for legal or illegal. You can connect and heal yourself, right? And so that's why they put the fluoride in the water to block the pineal gland and so forth. So it's your responsibility to understand this, to break free and to connect. And Tesla himself said, we have to connect our hearts to the heart of the universe and then we can heal. And that's exactly what we did. The love, the tremendous yeah. infinite love that's in the universe at higher dimensions to our own love. As right? Albert Einstein often spoke about too. He was a great mathematician and brilliant, but he also had a great understanding of the energy and the flow of cosmic energy. Absolutely, and yeah. Einstein came to the same conclusion I did. He said, I no longer believe in the God in the Bible, but I believe in the God that, that exists and is perceived in nature. Okay, and I couldn't understand why those people who, born again Christian for 20 years, why with their Bible they couldn't heal me. 
Well, I had to learn the truth, and the truth wasn't, it was beyond that book. There's yeah. truth in that book, but it was truth beyond that book that's not in that book, and that's why most pastors, priests, nuns, and so forth cannot heal. And, and I want to leave your audience with this, because this is really key, and one of the truths that I had to come to is to how to tell real from false teachings, how to tell real teachers from false teachers, and it's really so simple. Vibrationally, just as we talked before, if you send love, right, send love to an animal or a baby or, or whoever that is, take your, whoever you think your great teacher is, would it be Jesus, Buddha, or a preacher, or pastor, or, you know, someone on TV, send them love, just send the image. A profound prophet you will get love back many fold. It'll reflect, okay? If it's a dark prophet, even if they look nice and speak well and wear nice suits and you know iron shirts, you will not get love back, right? It's like a good person. You lend them money, they return the money, okay? All right, but a bad person, you lend them money, they go away and they, you never hear from them again, okay? Send them love, right? I had a picture of 20 prophets. 19 of them were truly aligned with the love, life, and light of Jesus Christ. One wasn't. I could tell with this method which one wasn't right away. So this goes for your, uh, your local favorite authors and so forth, and, and it goes for the higher spirits, because many people are following false teachings these days, and they're getting lost in traps. A lot of healers that happens to. Well, the sad reality is most healers carry evil on them because they align with dark forces and they don't know they're dark. Well, what comes to mind when you're saying that is I see twofold there. I see like Jesus, for instance, to give an example, of, of, uh, there was the man of, of who he was, and then there was the, the thinking and, and, the, and the transmission and the energy that, that was uh, him and around him. So that would be mm -hmm. with anybody, uh, any other person we would think about. So are we making that imprint on that person or that energy around them or the energy that they're manifesting? Because well, I make a distinction between the two. Like when I think of Yogananda, for instance, I think of the man he was, and then the and then the energy that he manifested that that, that he tapped into. So it's the twofold. The way I look there. at it is this: Yes, the, Jesus was connected to higher dimensions of the universal energy field. So was Yogananda. Yogananda figured it out. Yes. All right. Now I've learned to connect to those higher dimensions, and clients that I've worked with. And they say, Ed, I need your help. I got trouble. I said, just carry my picture, feel me in your heart, and thank me for healing you. You don't need to call me up on the phone. Because the higher dimensions that I'm connected to, as you connect to me with gratitude, you draw those in. You draw them in. That's why a true, devout Christian, if they have a real connection with Jesus, they can just thank Jesus for healing him, and the love in the higher dimensions can come through that connection with him. Now, most don't. They think they do because they went to church a few times, but that doesn't mean you're connected. So you have to understand the real truth here before you have that connection. But with that connection, you're connected to these higher dimensional energy fields. And so, for example, Yogananda, all right, I can give thanks and send love to him. I've read his books. I have a connection with him. And then I get connected to the higher dimensional energy fields that he was connected to. Ed, we, just have a, we just have a few moments left, yes. and uh, I would like to speak about marijuana as they are doing recreational in certain states and, and sure. using it for medicinal purposes. Mm -hmm. uh, is it okay to smoke marijuana or is it not okay? And at what point in time is it not okay? Uh, meaning the okayness is are you going to be losing your, your energy and uh, like alcohol, you do black up, sure. blackouts. And you're, and you're dumbing down, and you're going to stupors, so therefore the spirits, uh, negative energy can come into your spirit and your soul. Is this, can this happen with marijuana? And if it's respected, and what mm -hmm. do you think about that? Anytime you have an intoxicant, mm -hmm. and that intoxicant can be anesthesia, it can be marijuana, it can be alcohol, it can be Adderall, anytime you have an intoxicant, you leave yourself open. Uh, to, to dark spirits to come in. It's like leaving your house open with no locks on the doors at night. Okay, so that's always a danger. Now, what there's things we know about marijuana and there's things that we call hidden knowledge. The hidden knowledge is they put programs on us to block our thinking. Marijuana undoes that program, right? And when someone's in that slightly intoxicated state with marijuana, they can access fields of energy and frequencies that they normally couldn't access, which is why singers and songwriters often smoke a joint before they, they write songs. 
As well, Harvard did a study, and I believe this just from my own observations, that marijuana severely depletes the area of motivation. And no one I've known who smoked a lot was high on motivation. So I have a correlation and agreement with that. So, you know, we all have to make our choices. Whether we take an aspirin, an antibiotic, or, or you know, have a beer, we have to make our choices. Personally, I don't think it's that terrible for you if done in moderation. But if you do it in excess of moderation, it can have negative effects like anything else. And the reality is everything is energy and all energy can be transformed. So the negative effects of tobacco or alcohol or marijuana, you can transform those if you connect to higher dimensions. So a Come typical, back on your frequency. A, a typical person, what is moderation? Because for one who says moderation, they could say, okay, I'm going to smoke four joints a day. No. So moderation is? Well, you know, if, if you ask a, a Russian what's moderation in vodka, they would say half a bottle, right? If you ask an American, they would say half a glass, right? Yes. So it really just depends on who you are and what your tolerance is and the potency and all those things, which I'm really not an expert in. That's not my area of expertise. Right. But, you know, I tried marijuana at 14. I've, I've occasionally dabbled in it here and there, and I'm still alive, kicking and strong and, right. and swimming my laps in the morning and so forth. So. So I would say moderation, uh, my moderation would, I would think would be once or twice a week and, and not the whole joint, just a little bit of it. So that is moderation. Less is more and, and, it's, and, and, and the intention of smoking is to raise this vibration of polarizing it to one point so you can get into a deep re relaxation and get into this heartfelt energy. It's just a, well, it's, it's a tool to help you, and then at one point you won't need that tool anymore. So don't abuse perhaps, it. Perhaps, yes. And don't but depend here, on it. Here's the thing. Yeah. You've got to clean yourself before and after. Same thing when you watch the news. Nothing will lower your vibrations faster than watching the news. Yeah. Okay? You've got to clean yourself before and after. Same with watching a horror movie. Same with, you know, getting drunk. All right? Getting drunk is not going to kill most people, but if they've picked up some dark spirits in that escapade, they could have problems for a long time after. So we clean ourselves before and after. Ed, we have a very, very brief moment in time left mm -hmm. here. What would you like to share with the audience, a final uh, note that you would like to really share? There's something deep from your heart that you'd yeah. like to share with others. Everything can be healed. No prophet ever said to follow a book, a religion, or a church ever. Avoid the middlemen. Connect directly to heaven and earth yourself and learn how to do it. Master that connect direct to heaven and earth, no middlemen. Everything can be healed in. That's the message. Thank you. And for those who want to connect to you, you have an incredible Facebook presence right now. And how do they find you on Facebook? They, they can go to Facebook, uh, facebook.com slash Healer or uh, healinggenius.com is my website, and they can sign up there. Okay, great. It's Thanks been, for having me, Victoria. It's been a great honor, a great pleasure indeed, and I'd like to have you in the future so we can talk on a lot more underneath all of this. Wonderful. Love thank to you. be here. And thank you, Ed. Uh, my pleasure. Thank, thank you. you. And from the art of conscious living, do take care of yourselves and take care of others. <laughs>